Uh, my name is Wael. I'm a postdoctoral researcher at the SETI Institute and I work on the refurbishment and the science output of the Allen Telescope Array. I originally come from Lebanon and I did my PhD in Australia in Melbourne at the Swinburne University of Technology studying fast radio bursts and radio astronomy. My name is Sarah Schultz. I'm a research assistant here at the Allen Telescope Array, specifically research assistant to Alex Pollock, who's the director of the site, and I've been here for about two years. I'm Alexander Pollock. I'm the manager for the Head Creek Radio Observatory, and my background is electrical engineering. So I did my undergrad degree in Germany in automation and electrical engineering, and then I moved to the UK to do a PhD in radio astronomy instrumentation in Oxford. And that was sort of the first time I got involved into radio astronomy and radio telescopes and all of the technologies involved with running a receiver system in an observatory. What is the ATA? That is a very good question. The ATA <laughs> is a uh, 42 radio telescope array. It's unique because it is the only radio telescope ever built specifically for SETI, and it also has a very unique design. Its feeds are the only feeds of its kind, a log periodic design. A lot of other radio telescopes use what are called feed horns. And those feeds actually, even though they're kind of a 20 year old design, have remained cutting edge, which is really exciting and allows us to continue to remain on the cutting edge of science and make it a competitive instrument. I arrived here on site literally before COVID happened. I was supposed to be visiting the site for a few days, maybe to a week or two, and everyone knows what happened in, in March 2020. And then I thought like, okay, I've never lived in the US and I live here, I work, and then I guess COVID happened and we were trapped in an observatory. Having said all of that, I walked into the Allen Telescope Array site without really knowing what the status of the instrument was. The ATA is hosted on the Hat Creek Radio Observatory. The observatory has been around for quite some time. It has been around maybe since the 60s, since the early, the golden days of radio astronomy. Back in the day, it was a bit, let's say, in a non-stable position. The telescope was not working as intended, and there was pretty much a lot of work to be done to get the instrument sort of up and running. There were people before, and people tell you X doesn't work, Y doesn't work, but not everyone is aware of all of the issues. So the first step was to just get a good overview, what works, what doesn't work. Before becoming an intern here, I actually visited in 2019 and it was wire jungle for sure. And I think a lot of the reason it's just gone is we just replaced a lot of the hardware. With wanting to do things correctly, it's always a fight against faster, faster. And that's, I think that's kind of a problem that has been in the past is it wasn't done so methodically. When they initially kind of came up with the project, they tried to push the boundaries of what is possible. So they used the most broadband equipment, they built everything from scratch. And the main problem was they went for performance and bandwidth, but they didn't consider that kind of the reliability could be an issue. So it's always a bit of a difference. Is it kind of an engineering project or kind of do you address that as a research project? Everywhere in the world, everyone builds multiple prototypes. And what we have here is pretty much the first prototype of that system. So of course it's not perfect, but at that time they built the best they could with the technology. Our team started working pretty much on the instrument back in 2019. We had a... Um, generous donation from Franklin Antonio to work on the refurbishment of the Allen Telescope Array feeds. And that included a redesign of some of the feed components to make them more sensitive and to make them more reliable. And we ended up with a design where we all said that this is the design moving forward. And then after that, we constructed more and more feeds that are now actively being put on ATA dishes, pretty much as we speak.
So we're now at Antenna 3C and if we look inside we can see our Antonio feed and it's the second version feed installed in the ATA and that's the one where um, we did most of the refurbishment work on. And it's designed in a way that lower frequencies couple in at the wider peaks or the longer triangles here and the higher frequencies couple in on the front. And what you hear in the background and you can feel when you touch the feet, the vibration is our cryo cooler. So that entire pyramid is cooled down to around 70 Kelvin. But for shorter people. And then we take out the emergency stop so that the antenna can move afterwards. So when Wild starts the next observation, we're good. The technology which we developed through the refurbishment program, that's basically something where other observatories can utilize the technology we developed. In the past, everything was custom hardware, and we are now at a point where we use just off-the-shelf GPUs, off-the-shelf compute nodes to do all of the processing, which simplifies a lot of the development and makes it also portable to other instruments. So a lot of the opportunities which we have now, the software, the beamform or the correlator which we developed, we can use that and port it to the Cosmic project at the VLA. And they can use the same code, they can use basically the same software, the same pipeline which we developed for the ATA and they can apply it on their instrument. So if we look at that feed, so that's a new prototype which we developed. Jonas from Chalmers University in Sweden um, designed that feed horn over the last three years. And the idea was when we started with the refurbishment program, we wanted to have an alternative and for the construction and for the design, I asked him if he can design the size in a way that it fits into the existing cryostat which we have and in the existing glass dome, so it will be for us just a drop-in replacement. And he finished that about three months ago as part of his PhD thesis and we installed it on the antenna now and we use it as part of the 20 antennas that do daily observations. And as far as we can tell, it even performs a little bit better to the log periodic. And if it proves to be good, and if you don't see any failures, it's a good example for an alternative for new receivers on the remaining telescope. Over the last 20 years when the ATA was built, people out there in the community know, okay, they know the instrument and they know it never really worked, but what is very important for us is now to show them that this has changed. I was supposed to be a three-month internship person. Um, <laughs> it's given me a really good foundation for where I want to go in the future. And then I think we have a really passionate team that wants things to succeed. This year we actually have some international interns, which is really exciting, just giving us more people to work with with our small team, expanding our team. Two of them are from Germany and one of them is from Brazil. They're all working on their bachelor's thesis here and hopefully they'll contribute to the site with those bachelor theses or they'll just have a good experience here. <laughs> Either slash both would be great. And I think we're hoping to have more in the future. Oh, um, what did I say earlier, shocking guys? Um, yeah, nightmares and sleep, yeah, no. Um, I would say throughout the last three years, I learned a lot. There's never a boring moment in here. I always have an opportunity to learn something new because it's just such a complicated or complex instrument. And then also the interaction with the team, I learned a lot from them and it's, I would say that it's a definitely a fantastic journey those three years. Well, what keeps me going? I love science. I, I love technology. I am proud that I am part of a team 
that is geared to answer humanity's most profound question. I am part of that community. What keeps me going really is making sure that the Allen Telescope Array, which is a, a telescope that wasn't in its optimal state in the last few years, being sort of upgraded and placed in such a way that it can be utilized by the astronomical community. On a daily basis, really, what keeps me going is operating the telescope, seeing new capabilities coming out of it. Today, for example, I decided to look at a pulsar, a spinning neutron star that emits pulsed emission. And it was the first time that I can actually detect single pulses in the current observing mode that I was utilizing. And so on, on a daily basis, this is what really keeps me you know, awake at night, seeing that the instrument is doing what it's supposed to be and what it's engineered to be doing.